Well, the way that I would think about it is that um, is that currently around 50% of SoftBank's assets are pu publicly listed. Now, with the ARM IPO, that uh, would increase to 70%. So that would make it um, a lot more a lot easier for SoftBank to dispose of its assets. And SoftBank today still trades at a holding discount of around 45%, so very much elevated. That means that SoftBank can use part of the proceeds of the ARM IPO to finance a new buyback. And at such an elevated discount rate, that would be very attractive for SoftBank shareholders, the largest of which, of course, is Masa-san himself. So if Masa um, holds on to his stake while um, other people participate in that mm -hmm. buyback, his relative stake in the company would increase even further than, than the roughly 30% that he owns today, making, uh, making it more likely that the company would be taken private. But doesn't that, I suppose, pull the rug a little bit out of the, the regular investors, the non masasan non-big stake investors that could have potentially had gotten in in the past, say, let's say 24 to 36 months, that could be looking at far less for their initial investment than what they got, if what you're saying is to be true? Well, um, ultimately, of course, um, if you are an investor holding SoftBank Group shares today, you do not need to sell them. Um, I would expect that if the company is taken private, which is a big if, um, that um, that would be at a material premium versus where the stock is trading today. So that um, that should allow regular investors to to still participate to the upside that we that we expect over the coming year. Right. Uh, I also want to talk about Arms Financials, Rolf, uh, because they've been investing a fair amount in R and D over the last few years, and obviously, you know, uh, the crown and the uh, the jewel in the crown, rather, for them is really uh, the fact that they are sitting on a lot of uh, intellectual property. Uh, right now, uh, which comes at a premium. So how do you work that into the numbers in terms of how they're able to milk it? Because they haven't quite been able to do that. And one of the reasons why NVIDIA thought that they could take over the business and turn it around. So how do they financially kind of push sales as well as profitability on the back of the, the kind of IP they're sitting on? Yes, so um, ARM is, is currently on a very strong trajectory. Its revenues grew around 12% year on year last quarter, and that might slow a bit in the near term because of the ongoing correction that we see in PCs and smartphones. But because of those investments that you that you mentioned that SoftBank has made over the past few years, ARM is in a very good position today. We we see that increasingly more and more ARM IP is being used in servers, automotive, and IoT applications, and that will drive revenue growth over the coming years. While at the same time, because those investments have already been made, we do not expect that operating expenses are going to grow materially over the next few years. So that creates a very good setup for, for the company in which we expect to see material revenue growth, very little growth in operating expenses, meaning that profitability should, should materially increase over the next few years. We expect ARM's EBITDA to almost triple from where it is today in the next five years, which, which makes for a very compelling story.